You can use stone coat epoxy to make wood resemble rock. I love what that diamond dust does. It makes it look just like there's chunks of quartz embedded into what you're doing. You don't need to be in a hurry when you're doing this process. We got plenty of open working time with our resin. And so you could just kind of step, evaluate, look at it, see what you like. Learn everything you need to know right now. You can actually use a heat gun and move that material around and make an organic pattern using heat and air. I call it painting with air. You're gonna do your first epoxy A pour. First epoxy. Learn with Jeff right now how he does his first exotic pour to make this wood look like stone. It's training day. I'll, I'll pour it as one piece and then before it sets up, I'll just pull that apart okay. and then all my effects will match as if it was cut from the same exact piece of stone. One of our most popular recipes is a white Carrera marble look. Ooh. I'm gonna teach you how to do that on steroids. This method here is great for a first timer because it gives you very complex looking results randomly and takes out a lot of the guesswork there is in learning how to do a faux finish like this. Have you ever gotten a bid on natural stone for your kitchen? I haven't. Just countertops alone, though, are thousands. You know, if you guys have ever gotten a bid on natural stone, you can relate to me and understand how expensive that price tag can be. You know, uh, a, a builder grade granite, like a Baltic Brown or something um, that, that's pretty popular, goes for about $65 a square foot. Exotic stone, $95, $75, sometimes $120 a square foot. Okay. Oh. Epoxy, this system, including the wood that we poured this on, is $5 a square foot, okay? <laughs> Learn the professional ins and outs, the epoxy tips and tricks, all found right here, right now. Stay tuned, enjoy the video. You got this. If you like what you see, you think this stuff is cool, hit that subscribe button. Share it with your friends, your family, your loved ones, everyone else in the world. We're trying to show everyone how easy stone coat epoxy is to use. Subscribe now. Hey, Philip here. You made it over from part one of our four part series of building an epoxy countertop. In step one, we built the substrate. Now we're gonna pour the color coat. Enjoy the video. Next step, epoxy undercoater, okay? okay? So depending on the color we're gonna do, depends on if I'm gonna do black or white. Okay, I'm gonna go a little darker on this one. So I'm gonna do a black undercoater on it. Two coats, sand in between with 220 grit. It's really simple as just applying paint. Okay, so I'm gonna pour that out. And a little goes a long way, thin to win. And you, you see how the black almost looks blue? Yeah, it, it does. It'll turn black when you when you let it dry. It'll, oh. turn, it'll turn black. So this is just sealing the MDF and getting me ready for epoxy and setting me up for success. This is a one quarter inch nap roller and I like that because it's not too heavy, but it's also not too light. It gets in all those cracks and crevices of that rock face. Okay. okay, and it's very fast drying. I don't have to wait 24 hours to pour. This dries in like 20 minutes. All right, guys, we're gonna let that dry. We'll come back and do a second coat, and then we're ready for our next step. That's when the fun begins, man. Yeah. The epoxy. You're gonna do your first epoxy a pour. First epoxy. How hard was this to build a, a structure here? How hard was this so far? So easy. I, I mean, I saw on the video that everything looks easy, but when you're actually doing it, like it just, it seems so natural. Mm -hmm. Now, is that perfect? No. No, it's imperfect. It doesn't matter. We mixed Bondo on the surface. All of that's gonna get hidden. I got a little high point right here. All of that's gonna get hidden. You don't have to have this perfect situation to get very professional results. So I purposely didn't make that perfect just so you see punch perfectionism in the face. It, I mean, if I poured clear epoxy on this, it would hide all of that. It would look like a grand piano finish. I mean, it lays out like glass, okay? So we'll let this dry, we'll come back, do another coat, and then we're ready for the fun part. All right, guys, the undercoater is dry. We're gonna sand this with 220 grit, and then we'll do another coat. Let's go. Okay guys, you can see where all the high points are of the Bondo, and that's okay. I'm just taking off that top layer of paint where that Bondo was, but I'm getting all those nibs and nubs gone so there's no really high points or mini mountains. That's a pro tip of how to get a really good undercoat, and then we'll apply the epoxy. Okay, let's go ahead and wipe the dust, and then we'll do another coat. Remember, I'm applying the undercoat quite thin. It's drying fast because of that, 
So as I apply another coat, be sure that all of the water from the undercoat evaporates before applying our epoxy. This is a pro tip so that you don't get any off-gassing or any water trapped between the epoxy and the undercoat. Let it dry and you'll get fantastic results. Okay guys, we sanded, we did our second coat. It's all dry, we are ready to pour the epoxy. Are you stoked? Yeah, let's all right. do it. So you grab the backsplash, I'll all grab right. the piece. We'll set this up. Here we go. Okay, guys, pro tip. Uh, because I'm doing this backsplash on the counter at the same time, when I do this pour, I'll, I'll pour it as one piece. And then before it sets up, I'll just pull that apart okay. and then all my effects will match as if it was cut from the same exact piece of stone. Oh, that was good timing. Look, awesome. Look at this. Here, let's set it down together. You make Where do you want it? Right here in the middle. Whoa! He, he, he made that. Well, I didn't make the rock. <laughs> well, God made that. Is that how it would go? Like this? Well, it, it's up to you. Oh my gosh. I, that I, is gonna I, be gorgeous. I made it for that to oh be the my gosh. But look at the colors. Isn't it oh amazing? Oh my gosh. I love this sink. Ken, my great friend, he brought this to us. He made this for the river house. We're actually we're actually building these countertops for my mom and dad. I, I think uh, there's gonna be a lot of love involved in this project and, and this sink is a perfect example of that. Ken is a, a mentor of mine, a good friend and he learned how to make rock sinks. Did you see the project where he did this in his own apartment that he's renting out? Uh, that, that came out really cool, and I gotta say, he's gotten better. This is even better. I cannot believe how we can you know, come up with an idea, put that idea into action, course correct, and learn from any, anything that we, we can glean from that first project, and you get better and better and better as, as you get experience, and what we hope is that this video helps your learning curve. We hope that you gain enough knowledge from this to have a home run first project. So guys, try this. Don't be afraid to get your hands sticky and pour that epoxy, because you'll never know what you can create until you try. You got this. So what we're gonna do is just take this masking tape and we're gonna mask around the perimeter. That way we capture any of the excess epoxy. You see, it's liquid, it's self-leveling, it's gonna flow. And because we put up a, a barrier or a temporary catch, that will allow me to tilt this and use gravity to create the mother nature effects that I'm going for. So mask that off, tilt it, and watch what happens. Here we go. I'm just going around the perimeter, I'll go a couple times, and uh, I just try to keep it high enough where it's not gonna like roll into the epoxy, but not too high. I'm just using normal painter's masking tape, which will be removed at the appropriate time during the pour coming up. Now guys, we get asked all the time, what if I can't tilt a piece? What if I'm doing this in place? We have a lot of videos that teach you step-by-step -step how to pour this in place over old existing countertops like uh, laminate. Uh, you can go over cultured marble, solid surface, any existing surface you can actually do this process over if you follow our videos, okay? Um, it's all about bonding primer. If, if you have a non-porous surface, you know, wood is porous, it'll, it'll soak in and kind of create a really good bond. If you have a, a, a non-porous surface, yeah, tile. You can go over tile. You just have to prep it correctly. So bonding primer is that intermediate between the steps that we've done already and going over a, a non-porous surface. So okay. bonding primer is your answer. But guys, we'll put the links below of how to go over a non-porous surface, but we hope this tutorial is so in-depth that you can really uh, capture and grasp the concept of putting epoxy over anything, all right? So we're gonna do the uh, backsplash. I really like this. Uh, this is something that we haven't really done a lot of is doing an organic looking backsplash, a, a live edge backsplash, right? It's just a piece of MDF with Bondo on the top painted black. What a cool undercoat. What a cool like canvas. We got a, a blank canvas here, you know? And so I'm excited to see how this comes out. What do you think, man? I think it looks awesome. And you know, that all natural look that the rock is actually gonna go into actual rock uh -huh. is, is just gonna be gorgeous. Yeah, you get, you get the real thing and then what we're emulating. And I think what I'm gonna do, 
is guys stick around we're going to do a low sheen finish on this so it'll it'll be high gloss as we pour it but then we'll do a matte finish you get that vibe when you when you look at this whole project it won't be like super glossy into a, a low sheen jeff here's what we do you got a i got a philosophy on color okay the more additives that are aren't in the same family that you add into the same project the more reactions you get like this, okay, where you'll get natural things to happen that you don't even really do. It's just a happy accident. But they're caused by using, you know, the combination between spray paints, dyes, and our metallic powders, okay? So if I just use metallic powder, you're going to get more like this. Okay. Okay. And then when I added spray paint, you're going to get things like this that happen. Oh. And so that this is more of a toned down, like sediment style. Um, almost like what you would see when you're driving through the desert and they got, you know, a, a sandstone cliff that's just kind of been weatherized all the way up, you know. And so, so if you just wanted that look, using different additives will do that for you. But in this case, we're going to do a combination of all three into the same bucket. And when you pour that out, they automatically want to start, start separating and they want to start fighting one another and creating uh, these reactions that make you look like a faux artist. <laughs> all right. So it's, I guess it's cheating. <laughs> okay, but that's the point guys. We really want to simplify this for you so that you get first time results that look very professional. Isn't that what we all want? So we're using our epoxy. We are going to mix it for two minutes using a drill. Okay, we're going to mix it in in just clear and then we're going to separate those by additive. I have um, five different additives that I'm actually going to pre-mix into these buckets and then the spray paint. We're just going to intermittently spray into our clear epoxy as we start to add those colors back. Let's get to mixing. Let's have some fun. You ready to rock? Yeah. So we do part B first. <laughs> okay. Part B is, is thinner. All right. So we're going to do a one to one ratio. Okay. We'll just break that seal. I do part B first because it's thinner viscosity. Okay. okay? And you're going to have a much thicker viscosity in our part A. And the part A hardens it. Um, actually the part B is the hardener. Oh. Yep. So the part B is the hardener. The part A is the resin. Okay. okay, and what we're gonna do is a one-to-one -one ratio. It's a really simple ratio, but a, a frequently asked question is, do I have to weigh this on a scale, a gram scale or something? No, it's, it's much easier than that. It's just, <laughs> just use a bucket with a graduated mixing uh, container and you can see exactly how much you need to use. So typically we use about three ounces per square foot um, per coat. And so we have two coats. We got our color coat that we're doing today. Yep. Tomorrow after this dries, We'll sand with 220 to create that mechanical bond, yeah. and we'll just do a clear coat. Nice. Same product, just no colors added. And the reason that's that's good is, is two reasons. It's going to provide depth and, and make it look even to like when you look at these pieces, they look deep, they look rich. You know, it's like wow, how, how'd you get how'd you get that to to? I mean, when you actually when you stand by the side, you can start to see like kind of oh. what's going on in that. So, um, that that that. It almost acts like a magnifier or yeah. a magnifying lens and it, it gives you depth. It also gives you durability because we have no spray paint. You wouldn't want spray paint in a food contact countertop, right? So right. that covers everything, makes, makes it food safe. Uh, it's all been FDA approved for uh, food contact. And so that's why we do a clear coat. Okay. And I'm gonna actually mix a little more than I need. The reason I'm doing that, Jeff, is because this technique, I like to have plenty um, to flow. And so what I think okay. we'll do is we'll do this and then we'll pour a sample if we have any left over and, and just um, show that when you do this technique, you, it's almost like a Christmas present. You never know what you're going to get. It just, <laughs> just kind of opens up and you see what it does. So as long as you pick really good colors and a combination between additives, typically it's a home run. Man. Okay. I did a one to one. Okay. Okay. I like to put my paddle all the way to the bottom and okay. then lift it up just a little bit. If I rub my paddle on the bottom of a plastic cup and the and the paddle's sharp, it's just gonna create shards of little bit little bits of plastic in there. Okay? Okay. Not a big deal. You could always do a clear coat and it's gonna hide all that, but okay. just learn don't don't run at full speed at the bottom of your bucket and chew that bucket up. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I pull it up off the bottom and I hold the bucket. If I don't it's so thick, it might grab that bucket and start spinning, spinning in it, it. And you'll, you'll wear some epoxy right, right in this region right here. All right, so pull that up. Now you can see it's turning foggy, right? Well, yeah. So you'll know it's starting to mix as that fog goes away, okay? Okay. So as I continue to mix, that's going to start to clear up again, okay? Mm. So the two parts start to mix. Now, 
if I entrain a bunch of air in this, yeah. it's going to turn white. Okay. okay. And, and sometimes customers freak out because a little batch where this is out of, it's too thin, and like it's too, it's too little to actually sink your your paddle, yeah. it'll bring a lot of air and turn it almost bright white, okay? Also, if you are uh, if you are mixing cold resin, it's gonna entrain air more. Now, oh. that all comes out no problem with a heat gun or a torch, so they don't need to panic. You can still do your project, torch it out, it'll clear right up, but don't panic if it turns white, that's why it is. Okay. So if you don't want it to turn white, what we've done is, We've taken these two bottles, we put them in front of the space heater. So we warmed it up a little bit. That's okay. going to help it flow for us and also help mix better. Okay. And so one of, our, one of our qualities is you have a long open time, but it still sets and you're ready for the next step the next day, just like other, other products. But you have that open time to do all of these effects. So if you're brand new, you don't have to be in a rush. You're not against the clock freaking out that it's going to set off and start smoking on. We get a lot of great feedback on the formulation and exactly how it is. People are just in love with the usability. And this stuff lays out like glass. If you, if you test this against some um, other products, you'll find that it absolutely lays out like glass comparatively to um, surface tension and, and different things. We, we really nailed that, uh, that formulation, man. And it's heat resistant. You can set hot pans on it. Um, it's, it's quite scratch resistant. It's UV resistant, okay? It's uh, food safe. Uh, all the qualities that we were looking for was usability and user friendliness with the DIY community. So it's, it's a one to one for that reason, you know? So I mix it for about two minutes using a drill and then I'll slow that drill down and rub the bottom and the sides of the bucket so that any of that part A that's kind of clinging to the side that's not wanting to mix, it, it, it helps me with that, okay? So I'll slow it down, I'll rub the bottom, I'll rub the sides, just kind of get all that goo off the sides, go back down again, rub the bottom, pull it up off the bottom. Remember, as I make contact with the drill paddle against the bucket, I'm going to go at a slow speed as to not chew up that bucket. And then I'm going to suspend it in the epoxy and go full nice. speed for at least two minutes. All right, guys, check this out. I'm going to take the clear uh, mixed epoxy and pour it in my different cups. These are my additive cups, and this is what I'm going to mix and then add it back in to the bucket. Are you following me? Stay tuned. This is going to be a fun pour. Okay guys, in this recipe, we're gonna use a plethora of additives. Let's show you what the recipe is. Here we go. We're gonna use black spray paint intermittently between pouring our additives. We're gonna use our bright silver metallic. We're gonna use our diamond dust metallic, our white metallic, and our epoxy dyes are gonna be white and black. And then I'm gonna do a little bit of color, and this is antique brass. It's gonna be mostly black and white and gray tones with a little bit of color. It's gonna emulate a Calcutta dark marble look. Hey folks, if you're enjoying this color recipe, head on over to our website, stonecoatcountertops.com. We have all the epoxy additives seen in this video. Our epoxy dyes, metallic powders, and spray paints are extremely color fast and will last a lifetime in your epoxy countertop project. Click the link in the description below. That'll take you over to our color additive section. Stick to the end. You're going to see Mike and Jeff use the leftovers to make some pretty cool sample pieces. So these additives, you, you really can't add too much metallic. You're not going to hurt the... Uh, the formulation, you only want to use about maximum of 5% by, by weight. And so we would never use that much in, in, in what we're doing. But artists, when they're just mixing up a little bit, you wouldn't want to like put 50-50 mix because this degrades the formulation if you put too much. But when you're doing counters and this amount of epoxy, we're only using a few drops. And okay. so it's, it's very forgiving. And then um, the spray paint, we use about 10 seconds per cup of, of okay. paint to tint it. But if I use little, it'll be much more translucent. If I use a lot, it'll be more opaque. When you mix these, yep. you want to start with the lightest one first if you're going to reuse that stick. But don't mix it fast until that starts to get entrained or else you'll just okay. buff it everywhere. Okay? okay. The metallics are harder to mix, so this is kind of how I start, just kind of in the middle. Yep, you're right, just bury those, and then you'll be able to go vigorously. The metallic powders take the longest to mix, so I start with those, then I move on to the epoxy dye, that mixes very easily, and then finally the spray paint.
We've already mixed our metallics. We're gonna mix these dyes in the spray paint. Ready? Yep. Okay, our black dye, there's just a few drops in that dye. A little goes a long way, and it's very easy to mix. It immediately turns that epoxy pretty opaque, okay? It's really, really easy to use, and it's very concentrated. I really like these dyes because they're designed to make resin sing. Oh! <laughs> it makes resin <laughs> sing, man. All right, so we got all of our um, additives mixed up. We've got our metallics mixed up. We got our spray paint standing by. Okay, you shake that can, I'll shake this can. You really wanna shake the spray paint to get any of the coagulated material from the bottom to intermix. I like to use gloss because satin and flat paint, they tend to have more solids that stick to the bottom of the can and then if you, if you don't mix well enough, it kind of spits chunks out when you're trying to spray it. So that's why I use gloss. That's a, a frequently asked question. So guys, when you spray in between all of your color additives, using a vacuum eliminates that overspray really well so you don't get that nasty smell in the air. So let's go ahead and turn that vacuum on and get to mixing. All right, so you see how I have a little bit of clear in the bottom of this bucket? Yeah. So I'll probably start out with just a color in that, just a okay. little bit of color sprayed in that clear kind of adds a fun effect. And then I'll just start grabbing these randomly and I'll add color in between grabbing these, okay? For that nice layering effect. Exactly, exactly. I mean, look at what that's doing, Doc. You pour a little bit of color in there, and it, it's already gonna give me this wild effect, okay? And this is a pretty simple color recipe, and I think it'll be a really nice um, contrast. It starts to give me a very fun bucket. I really like what that white does, how contrasted it is, and it'll, it'll just come out and pop. I love what that diamond dust does. That diamond dust is like, it, may, it makes it look just like there's chunks of quartz embedded into what you're doing. This method here is great for a first timer because it gives you very complex looking results randomly and takes out a lot of the guesswork there is in learning how to do a full finish like this. So it's, it's really simplified the process for us. All right guys, I'm gonna do a wash coat. And what a wash coat does is it pre-lubricates my surface. That way when I pour out this bucket, it has something to slip and slide over so it doesn't create what we call surface tension. If you have dry spots, the epoxy almost wants to go around those spots until they're wetted out, okay? okay. Does that make sense? Yep. I'm gonna take our black and I'm just gonna pour out a little bit of that black. Now the reason I saved the black to do our wash coat with is this is already pretty dark and I wanna get some color popping. Don't be afraid of color. So I'm just gonna kinda, kinda use that to, to bury underneath. But what you'll find is whatever color you use as your wash coat, that's what's gonna create veins and different things for you because it'll get, get squeezed together and come out, okay? So I'm just gonna use my, my tongue depressor as, as a squeegee. Guys, we have the backsplash pretty much butted to the back of this, and that's so when I pour this out, it almost looks like this piece was cut from the same stone. Look at that bucket, look at how that's already looking. Here's what I can do, I can do a ring pour, where I take okay. this out and do a ring, or I can do like straight, kind of flowing pieces, mm -hmm. and I think that's what I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna just, just, gonna, just gonna pour it randomly and let those pieces connect and see what it looks like. Awesome. You cool with that? Yeah. All right, here we go. Oh, that's a beautiful color combination. Look at that. I 
I'm just gonna kind of make some more veins. That way when I tilt this, they're gonna marry up and meet up, okay? How do you like how that comes out of the bucket? Oh my gosh, it's, it's gonna look amazing. So guys, you don't need to be in a hurry when you're doing this process. We got plenty of open working time with our resin, and so you could just kind of step, evaluate, look at it, see what you like, see what you don't like, and I really like how this is coming out, so I'm just gonna keep doing this method. Oh, that's a really pretty combination. I like this recipe, man. And you can see that diamond dust just in there. See the little sparkles, Jeff? And there's almost like a blue coming out from the gray. Yeah, that, that bright silver and that black and white, it, do, it does give it like that blue hue. Man, I had a blast with this piece. I love the color combination, but I'm curious, I want your feedback. Would you have added any colors to this to make it more visually interesting? Or do you like it just as it is? So question of the day, I like it just how it is or no, I'd add a color. And if so, what color would that be? Let us know in the comments below. Okay, so what I wanna do here, Jeff, is uh, why don't you just take these excess and pour a little bit more of each one in there. Okay. And, and make, our, make another dirty pour and we'll put a little bit more on this backsplash, okay? Guys, you have two options at this point. Let's say you're going over existing countertops that are affixed and they can't be moved. You can actually use a heat gun and move that material around and make an organic pattern using heat and air. I call it painting with air. Or if you have a buddy or a tilt table, you can actually tilt this and let gravity do the hard work for you. So in this case, because we're not affixed and we have the freedom to build this off-site and then install it, we're gonna go ahead and tilt this, okay? Stay tuned, this is a fun unlock, a pro tip of how to look like a faux artist that has a magic touch. All right, so the reason I like this table is because I could do giant pieces. We could do, you know, a giant island. We could do a 10 foot long countertop. I mean, you could, if you were working by yourself, you could literally do all of this by yourself. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this by myself and show you how easy it is to work, okay? Awesome. All right, so I'm gonna just kind of go at an angle. Now, because this, this resin isn't super warm, it's not really quick to flow, but it goes nice and slow. So I don't get any effect that I'm not looking for. It's just gonna move nice and slow for me, but it'll start to stack and create. So I'll go at an angle like this. It'll kind of start to go downhill that way. See over there in the corner how it's starting to flow? Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm actually gonna heat gun this a little bit so it moves a little bit faster. I'm gonna actually warm up these edges so that they will flow and kind of fill in any of our voided space. And as you can see, we don't need to be in a hurry, Jeff. Yeah. See how that moves faster there on the edge now? Yeah. It's all kind of slowly moving this direction. Yep. I'm gonna go this way. I'm almost like don't wanna move it much more. See what it did here? How it stretched all that out to make it look very organic? Yeah. Very, very real. I like those tight black veins from doing a black wash coat. Guys, pro tip. When you have surface tension, all you have to do is tap those areas, then the epoxy will flow. Boom, so I'm just gonna tap those areas and then when I peel this tape, everything will flow over those edges very well. Look at that backsplash. Oh. <laughs> nice. We have two choices, a propane torch or a heat gun. Both are effective and both work, but this one is like using a DeWalt high impact lithium ion battery drill. This is kind of like using a flathead screwdriver, much faster, still works, okay? So if we wanna pop the bubbles, that's where this is your tool of choice. If you wanna move material without overheating the material, a heat gun is super forgiving. As you know, as you get more experience, it becomes easier and you understand how fast you gotta move that torch to keep everything looking natural. Okay, so I'm just gonna pop these bubbles because when you mix the material, again, you get that air intrusion. So we're gonna pop those and I don't know how much I really need to move it anymore. I love the look that we're getting, yeah. okay? Cool. I'll use my propane torch and multiple passes to be sure to remove any air bubbles from the surface. 
Okay, guys, uh, my brother and I have installed a lot of natural stone. We've installed granite and quartz. We've installed uh, marble. We've done um, you know, even fossilized marble. We've installed countertops. And this would be classified as exotic granite or exotic stone. It goes for a lot of money per square foot. Like, have you ever gotten a bid on natural stone for your kitchen? I haven't. Just countertops alone, though, are thousands. You know, if you guys have ever gotten a bid on natural stone, you can relate to me and understand how expensive that price tag can be. You know, uh, a, a builder-grade granite, like a Baltic Brown or something um, that, that's pretty popular, goes for about $65 a square foot. Exotic stone? $95, $75, sometimes $120 a square foot, okay? Oh. Epoxy, this system, including the wood that we poured this on, is $5 a square foot, okay? <laughs> this is a pro tip right here. You see how it kind of looked funky at first when yep. you stopped? See how it flows out and does the hard work for you? Yep. You never want to panic when you do something that you think doesn't look perfect. Like, let it do its thing. How much different does this look from the moment that I first poured it out? Oh. You know, I mean, it doesn't look like the same piece. It looks, it, it starts to look better and better, yeah. you know? So I'm gonna peel this tape. So what I'm gonna do is, is, is create a, a new spot for the backsplash. I'm, okay. actually, I'm actually gonna use this and I'm gonna pour it right over the edge. And then that will just start to flow. I'm gonna break surface tension, just start to rub those edges out. And then it'll, it'll start to drag everything down with it and start to connect and look realistic. You know, you don't wanna leave those edges uncoated. But doing that rock face edge, looks so natural when you're done. And then I'm gonna just grab some of this and like just touch some of these surface tension spots. Yeah, this is looking fantastic, man. All right, let's set these buckets, or these cups up, and okay. we'll just set that backsplash right there on, on those. Awesome. That's a really cool backsplash. So I, I missed a little bit down here, so I'm gonna just use some of that bucket. That looks so good. This is, this is one of my favorite pieces, and I'm not just saying that, Jeff. We got a great comment here, guys. Kevin Baker asks, what is the largest size panel the tilt table can accommodate? That is a super good question. So we designed the tilt table to be the same height as spray paint cans. You set those out on your work table, set your project on top, it won't tilt till you remove those cans and you're ready to tilt. So it will work. The bigger you go, you might wanna grab a second set of hands to help you out. So I'm just gonna pull it down and away okay. to kind of promote that epoxy from coming over the edge. After I've completed my color effects, it's time to remove the tape and I'm gonna use that excess to coat the edges. You see how it's starting to run over the edge? All I'm gonna do is use my gloved hand to rub that out and it really makes this thing look natural. Check this out. And then all that color will start to come down over that edge and then tomorrow I can actually add a little bit of accents with spray paint and tap that in that edge and it looks extremely real. Edges are all looking really, see how that edge starts oh, to look? It looks beautiful. I love the faux rock face edge. I like to use the Bondo to create that to mimic mother nature. It's very forgiving and realistic. All right, imagine with me for one second. Your friends, they've never seen you do an art project, craft project, or anything related successfully. Do you think that you could do this? Do you got this? The video that we just showed you by using these materials, adding it back into the bucket and pouring it on this prepped surface is really as easy as we show here. I love the results. It came out so good. You got this. Bonus content. Jeff, I'm gonna show you some bonus content. We have some excess epoxy. Awesome. We're gonna utilize it. We're gonna make, one of our most popular recipes is a white Carrera marble look. Ooh. I'm gonna teach you how to do that on steroids. Okay, nice. are you stoked? I'm stoked. All right, here we go. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this white. Let's make a few cups, okay? So we got that cup. One squeeze. I like to use multiple additives. I'm using dye and metallic, not just dye, okay, or right. not just metallic. You can use just dye or metallic, but when you use a combination, it looks more realistic. It's almost like baking where you're folding it over. Just yeah, yeah. Making so, sure all that flour doesn't pop out at your face. Here's what I'm gonna do. I got white metallic, I got white dye. Yep. Okay, so I'm gonna go white dye, okay. Okay. I'm gonna go white metallic. metallic. 
I'm gonna go white die. I'm just okay. this isn't my classic Carrera marble. Okay. This is just a, a take on it, okay? Okay. Take a little bit of black spray paint. Nice. Okay, rub that in there. Now I'm gonna use my hands. How natural does that already look? Oh, amazing. Okay. It's really that easy, man. So people spend hours trying to get a natural looking stone and you can do it within moments with your hand. There's a couple spots I don't like. One is that dot. Right. And then one is this surface tension. Yep. So I just evaluate. There's another piece of surface tension right there. So I have a reservoir right here on the ground. I'll just touch that. Now let's say these are all finished edges. Yep. I would just want to start rubbing those edges out. Just start lubricating those. Okay. If I don't, the epoxy will continue to miss them. Okay. okay. So this is a finished front edge. That's a finished edge. This would represent where it butts the wall. So right. th those aren't important. Those are important. But that little dot, See how it's already starting to look more natural? Yep. But all I gotta do is tap it, okay? All I gotta do is tap anything that looks fake. It's already flowing for me. I don't need to do much. If I tilt this thing, mm -hmm. I'm gonna get it to stack, okay? okay. I'm gonna get it um, more natural movement. So if it wasn't glued to the surface, like some aren't, are glued, so I, I could take a heat gun and push this. If they're not glued and you're pouring them off site, boom, just tilt it a little bit. It starts to give you very, very realistic looking mother nature built stuff, okay? I heat just this section up right here. That's gonna flow faster than everything around it. Okay, see that? Yeah. Cool. And you just made that. Jeff was fantastic at picking up these tips and tricks. He's making his own pieces now Check it out. Good job, Jeff. This was awesome. I hope you enjoyed this step so far. I know Jeff enjoyed it. I loved it. Okay, guys, tomorrow we're gonna do the clear coat. We're gonna show you step by step how to sand, prep, pour, torch, and finish this top like a pro. We'll see you there on that step. Visit us anytime at stonecoatcountertops.com. And until next time, remember, you got this. We'll see you on the next video. Woo! <laughs> This was awesome. I hope you enjoyed this step so far. I know Jeff enjoyed it. I loved it. Okay, guys, tomorrow we're going to do the clear coat. We're going to show you step by step how to sand, prep, pour, torch, and finish this top like a pro. We'll see you there on that step. Visit us anytime at stonecoatcountertops.com. And until next time, remember, you got this. We'll see you on the next video. Woo! <laughs> hey, that was video two of our four part series on how to make an epoxy countertop. In step one, we built the substrate. Step two, we just finished the color coat. And in our next step, part three of four, we're gonna pour the clear coat. We'll see you there. And from the Stone Coat Countertops team, you got this.